When I was younger, I used to love going to luxury stores when I traveled, and I've done a fair share of designer shopping when I was abroad. Fast forward to now, luxury shopping is often not in my itinerary when I travel, and to save myself the temptations, I also don't actively window shop even if I'm at the airport. At least for me, I'm not exactly the same person when I travel. Maybe it's the jet lag or the fact that I'm simply not following my routine. On top of that, your spirit is usually high when you're away because you're excited to explore new places and to see new things. Don't get me wrong, those are all very positive emotions. After all, we all go on vacation to relax and to feel good. But in my personal experience, that was also the reason why I bought some expensive things on impulse. I think it's the sentiment of wanting to make the most of your vacation and to pamper yourself with everything nice. And if you come across something that's like a limited edition for that country, the temptation can be even harder to resist. I used to think of it as, you know what, I've traveled a long way to come here, so why would I miss out on the only chance to buy this thing? However, when I came back to my normal everyday life and my familiar setting, I would then see those things in a different light. Perhaps they didn't seem that interesting or special anymore, or I might have overlooked the aspect of practicality when I made the purchase. Another reason I don't actively buy luxury items when I travel is to do with the issue of packing. Now, luxury items usually come with beautiful and big packaging. For example, if you buy a Chanel bag, you get a box and a massive shopping bag. Personally, I tend to keep all the packaging for my luxury purchases. It might seem tedious to some people, and it is, but here's the thing. One thing that I've learned about my luxury collection is that life changes, and other times, you change your mind. I've downsized my luxury collection quite a lot, and I can tell you, just because you don't have the box or the paper bag for that Chanel bag that you want to sell, it can really affect the resale value even if you have the receipt or the proof of purchase. So personally, I like to plan for the unseeable future. Now, I have watched videos where people would pack the luxury items in their suitcases, but then they would ship the boxes and other packaging home. But for me, it just feels like a lot of effort to spend my money. I now also like to travel light. I feel like when I have less to drag along and worry about, I feel lighter and I'm also a lot more present. Along the same line, I'm very mindful with what I add to my suitcase. Typically, I don't check in my luxury items, so that means I only have a very limited capacity with how much I can carry in my carry-on, especially if you're talking about bigger pieces such as designer handbags. The next reason designer shopping is not part of my holiday planning is because I don't want shopping to take up my time from other activities, especially if I'm going to a new place that I've never been before. I want to spend that time to explore the area, the food, and the landscape. You know, I've been to some really beautiful luxury stores. The Chanel in Amsterdam, for example, is amazing. But here's the thing. Luxury stores might look different on the outside, but they tend to sell the same things on the inside. In fact, I bought a pair of Chanel Classic Bali Flats in the Chanel store in Amsterdam, even though I could have easily bought the same things here. So for me, going to luxury stores in a new city just doesn't seem that appealing to me anymore. I also want to touch on the topic of scoring an Hermes Birkin or caddy bag in places like Tokyo and Paris. The idea is that these cities receive a lot of tourists every day, so the Hermes stores are more open to offering very popular handbags to their customers, sometimes even without a purchase history. Personally, this is not something I'm interested in. I've watched videos where people talk about how you need to enter yourself into a lucky draw system. And if you get selected, you'll be given an appointment time. You then need to show up at that time, interact with the sales associate, hopefully get on their good page, and maybe then they will 
offer you a handbag. Some people had really amazing experience, but it's not something I want to subject myself to when I'm on my holiday. Some of you know, we went to Paris Disneyland earlier this year, and my husband kept asking if I wanted to drive to the shopping district, seeing we were in Paris, but I was quite happy to pass on his kind offer. On that note, years ago, I had this experience of going to the Hermes store in Amsterdam and I asked if they had a Belit bag. Not a Birkin, a Belit. And the sales associate said they didn't have anything in the store, but she asked me to go back the next day to check. And I did. And I went back again the day after. Looking back, it was her polite way of saying, we don't offer anything without a purchase history, which I now know is the common policy for Hermes. So that's fine. But we did have to adjust our itinerary just for me to drop by Hermes. Another reason I don't feel too excited about buying luxury items abroad is because I don't want to worry about things like exchange and return. Now, luxury brands all have their own return policies. I've been told that Hermes do accept return even if the purchase was made overseas. But other luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, for example, don't do the same. And if you buy something from a department store, for example, Savages and Harris, they also have their very own terms and policies. For me, I just like to keep things simple. If I buy anything expensive, I want to know that I have the option to return it easily if I change my mind. Moving on, after learning about minimalism, I've stopped buying a lot of things, and one of them are souvenirs. I still buy small gifts such as key rings for friends and family, but I no longer buy any souvenirs for myself. As cliche as it might sound, I think the best souvenirs from a trip are memories and the photos I take on my phone. And this small shift of perspectives really changed the way I shop when I travel. In the past, I used to love buying those random little knickknacks. And when I started making more money, those knickknacks were replaced by expensive designer items. For example, when I went to Rome, I thought, you know what, I'm going to commemorate this trip. And so I decided to buy my Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandolier 25. And fortunately, I still really enjoy that bag. And I want to say there's nothing wrong with shopping this way, especially if you've had the item on your wish list for a long time and you just want to add some sentimental value to it. But for me, it became something else. Sometimes I even felt like the trip wasn't perfect or complete until I bought something nice for myself. And there were too many times where I would spend my time actively looking for things to buy rather than just enjoying the trip. I now also prefer to shop online because then I know I'm in my space and I can take my time. Sometimes just being in the store can really affect your mood, even if you're not aware of it. I used to feel like I should also buy something when I saw everyone else in action. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I used to really enjoy shopping in the store because I could try on the item and I could compare sizes and colors. And if you're lucky, you might even get a glass of champagne. But I must say, the novelty is wearing off. I feel like the older I get, the more practical and uninteresting I've become. When I think of shopping in the store, I now picture how I have to drive to the store, look for parking, walk through the crowd, make small talk, and maybe even look for food. In contrast, if I make an online purchase, the delivery is usually free and the parcel comes straight to my doorstep. On top of that, the return is usually quite hassle-free. So for me, this is a really easy choice to make. Now, I'm not totally against the idea of doing luxury shopping while traveling. It's just that I now prefer to do it in a more mindful way. For example, certain luxury brands are not readily available online. One prime example is Goyard. In the UK, you cannot order Goyard pieces online, and there's only one store in the entire country. So if I happen to walk past a Goyard store, I will have no qualm going in to have a look and maybe even learn about the heritage. I also want to mention that my current shopping mentality has a lot to do with the fact that I already have a collection of luxury items that I'm really happy with. In fact, there are certain pieces that I've had for years. At the moment, 
and my collection is serving me very well and I don't feel like I'm lacking any major elements. So even if I don't do any more shopping, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. But if you're still building a collection, I can totally understand if you see things from a different perspective. After all, I was that girl who was willing to skip lunch and drop by every Chanel store to try to buy the perfect Chanel mini flap. But now that I have my dream mini flap, I can say I am happy and that the search is officially over. Depending on where you're from, there might also be some tax saving benefits when you shop abroad. But for me, at least from my past experience, the saving is not exactly worth the time and effort I spent on acquiring the purchase while I was on the trip. And let's not forget, you should also declare the value of the purchase at the airport. I would love to hear your thoughts about this topic, so please let me know if you enjoy luxury shopping while you're traveling. That's it from me guys, take care and I will see you soon. Bye!